Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock with another in the 40 Days of Prayer and Fasting series. My church did a 40-day venture in the end of 2017, and in 2018, I am working my way through putting a bunch of them into my Bible as Bible journaling, so making some adaptations to them. So I had done the sketches in a sketchbook, and there's a link in the description if you want to see all the pictures in the sketchbook. Um, we've done the sky, we've done these beautiful hands, and last time we did the eyeball, no, last time we did the fortress, <laughs> that, this is one before it, so we did the fortress last time, and this time we are going to be working on this next one with the water. Now this one's a little on the crazy side, but it is beautiful, so I'm going to do it anyway, so there you go. The verse is from Revelation 22, then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb. And let me tell you, you got to read that the beginning of that passage because it's amazing. I'm going to be doing this in a an interleave Bible. Interleave means there's a blank page and then a page of text and a blank page and a page of text because I wanted to do a full page on this one. You could shrink the sketch down that I've put in the, the description down below and make it a two-inch column one. But if you have a big Bible, this is a good one to do big because I, I want to do that. This Bible is a soft cover and it doesn't lay flat, so I put something underneath of that side of it and then I just put a clamp on it. It's just a little old binder clip because it's going to hold that page down so that I can draw on the left side without having that right page get in my way. Now I've transferred my sketch in pencil first and a bunch of that pencil is going to disappear, so don't get too fussy about you know, how much detail you put in it, that sort of thing, especially on the letters. I didn't realize the letters were going to completely disappear. And of course, I'm doing some hyper speed coloring. I wish I could do this in real life. And I'm using my Karen Dash watercolor pencils. They're very highly pigmented. So if you're using other watercolor pencils, you may need to use more pigment in order to do this technique. But it's a really easy way to get a quick all over background. And I'm taking a baby wipe and I'm just pulling the color down and the water underneath, I'm just pulling, 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 pulling with this baby wipe. And you can see sort of there's a line, a horizontal line where I stopped and then there's a line at the bottom. You may want to continue going all the way down if you don't want that little line. I didn't realize it was going to stop like that for me. And I'm not sure why it did because usually it melts out better than that, but there you go. It did not turn out to be a major problem for the piece. So then I ironed it real quickly between some paper, and then I pulled out my sketch. Now, there, I, there's like an easy way to just make a swoosh. Just start scribbling little scallops, and don't follow exactly the sketch because really it's just scallops, and then you're adding details to it. I'm going to add a bunch of bubbles. I'm going to add a few spots where little curly cues come up off the top, little bubbles flying through the air, and then some horizontal flat types of shapes because that's the surface of the water. And if you make it kind of swoop in a few spots, it's hard to describe how to draw water, but I know a lot of people really loved this one when I posted the sketch on Instagram, so I'm trying to explain as best I can. In the, um, the photographs that I was looking at, because I looked at a whole bunch of pictures of water trying to find something that was gonna work for this, um, for the original sketch, and there were like things where the water curls down underneath and you have dark with a few white bubbles. And then on the top, you have more white bubbles with less color in them. So it's just a matter of, you know, kind of picking and choosing, putting some down below, some up above. And then just kind of bouncing around with a damp brush. Not super wet, because if you get it super wet, then that leads to all kinds of other issues. But... When I say damp brush, I mean like get it wet, rinse it off, and then wipe it kind of between your fingers or wipe it on a paper towel or something to get off the worst of the water so it's not soppy wet. And as I go around, I'm kind of drawing around some of those bubbles with the brush so I get some soft edges and some hard edges, some lighter and some darker edges just to get a variance on them. And there you go. There's water. <laughs> I did have to retrace my letters. Fortunately, the color is light enough that I was able to see through. A lot of times, once you watercolor something, you can't see through it, and you have to use other methods to transfer the image. And then I, I am using a uh, another watercolor pencil 
to create the letters on top and I'm going to watercolor over those. But one of the things that I loved about this particular concept for the Water of Life is the way it's described in that chapter. So if you have not read Revelations 22, go read just that first part of the chapter. It is so beautiful. It really, the language in it is so poetic. And the way they describe it as this crystal clear water just seemed perfect for something like this, where you're just seeing those beautiful bubbles up on top and then really simple color. There is room there for journaling, and I may put a line of journaling along the bottom just so, I don't know, so I remember what I was praying for that day. But there's not a whole lot needed on this because it really does speak to the verse very well. The times that I put a lot of journaling is when I've gone kind of off the reservation and started doing all kinds of crazy things that aren't directly obviously related to the verse because a lot of times when I'm praying for some about something God will take me a totally different direction. So a couple of my final touches on this were to take a white gel pen. This is a Uniball Signo gel pen to add some white bubbles and then I took a blue micron pen to add a few more details into the water. And it might be more than you need to do. You don't necessarily have to add anything darker because the more you do the more you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I've totally messed it up. So if you get this, get as far as doing the watercolor pencil and you're happy with it, stay there. But I love contrast. To me, contrast really makes something come alive. And adding this really rich blue to it made a big difference to me. And put a real contrast between the rest of the water and that line across the top. So that's... That's kind of me. I'm, I'm the queen of overkill. I kind of can't stop myself. I never know when something's done. And then I went in, of course, with a few more white dots in the top section with my bubbles. So there you go. The water of life. Cool, clear, crystal water. And now I want a nice big drink of water after this. Anybody else? Go get yourself a nice glass and pour in some ice and some water and thank the Lord that you have clean water. And that's about it for today. If you want to subscribe, please do. I'd love to see you next week for our next video. Thank you so much and God bless you.